give us understanding unto the same thing. Only the word of God can change your world. As you listen to this book as like Christian Information Network history, your world shall shout. Hallelujah. If you have joy like a river in your soul, come on, shout a loud hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. We bless God for today. Thank God for giving us another Sunday and the beginning of a new week. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Let's have our seats. Those that are worshiping with us for the first time, I want to welcome you especially. Can you please rise up and come and take your seat here? Yeah, let's put our hands together to welcome them. All shall lead them to their seats. God bless you. We are glad to have you. Thanks for coming. May you be richly blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. This month is a special month to you, to me, to us, in the name of Jesus. The Lord will do outstanding things in your life. If you believe, say a louder amen. amen. <clears throat> we'll be looking at assessing the kingdom realities. Kingdom realities. All the Sundays in this month, whether I'm the one that preach or not, we'll be looking at that subject, the focus. And I believe God will grant us an access into his kingdom. He will reveal things great and mighty to us in Jesus' name. Let's bow our heads as we pray together. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise, Lord, because you have brought us here to bless us before we enter into this week and the rest of this month and year. I pray, Lord God Almighty, that through your word this morning, you will speak to us. Grant us understanding. Thank you, Lord, because you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let me start by reading from the book of um, Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, verses 11 to 12. Matthew 13, 11 to 12. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever asks, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever at not, from him shall be taken away, even that which he hath. Hallelujah. From the theme for the month, I want to bring out a subtopic. I call it battle for supremacy in the kingdom. Or better battle for supremacy of kingdom. What we are trying to say is that there is a battle for supremacy. Kingdoms are at war against one another. There is an opposition. Battle for power. Battle to subdue. Battle to rule. Between a kingdom and another kingdom. From the scripture we have read, it was the interpretation or the submission of Jesus Christ after he has given us, the disciples, the parables. 
which we regard as the parable of the sower. And they now came to Jesus. They said, why do you speak to them in parables? And Jesus answered, it is for you that is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. For to them it is not given. There are mysteries of the kingdom. There are things that are realities of the kingdom. That we must annex. We must have access to. When the Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom. Seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All other things shall be added. Because it is when you have the key, the access into the kingdom. That is when you can have access to all other things. When you gain access into the kingdom. Then you'll be able to benefit in the realities. The provisions that are made in the kingdom. Hallelujah. If you look at the book of Daniel chapter 4. I'm talking about supremacy. Battle for supremacy in the kingdom. Or of the kingdom. What we are saying is that there are battles, kingdom versus kingdom. There are kingdoms at war. And there are battles. And this battle is to gain supremacy. Look at Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4. And of course, don't forget that it was an interpretation to the dreams of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And he could not understand the dream. And eventually, an interpretation was given. And the interpretation that was given, verse 11 now tells us, he says, the tree grew. Sorry, yes, Matthew 4, 17. Sorry, 17. Look at 17, sorry. He said, this matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of holy ones for the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and give it to whomsoever he will and set it up over it the basis of men i will give you interpretation of that place but look at daniel chapter 2 also in daniel chapter 2 verse 36 it was another interpretation of another dream say this is the dream and will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Thou, O king, are king of kings. For the God of heaven had given thee a kingdom, power, and strength and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of heaven had he given into thy hand, and had made thee ruler over, over them all. Thou at this head of gold. Now, I don't want to read all the scriptures there, but he's still talking about King Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel was telling the king, God has given you a kingdom. God has set you up. In fact, Nebuchadnezzar was addressed as king of kings. <laughs> Is it not Jesus we call king of kings today? But the power, powerful Nebuchadnezzar then, he was addressed as king of kings. And even the almighty God acknowledged that. That Nebuchadnezzar, he was so strong and he has an expanse of empire. So he has other kings over other empires. But that were submitted or under submission under Nebuchadnezzar. That is how powerful his kingdom was. 
But God made him to understand in the first place we read <coughs> that there is a decree of the watchers. God Almighty is the one that set up a man. Is the one that put forth a king. Is the one that enthroned kings. But every king must understand that Almighty God Himself rose among the kingdom of men. When I was preparing for this sermon, it did not even occur to me initially that there is going to be a change of government this month. <laughs> Praise God. That we're going to have another, you know, inauguration. That this 29th, another king will take over. Call it president. Whatever you call him. He becomes the number one person in the entire nation. <clears throat> when he coughs, his cough is not ordinary. When he sneezes, his sneeze is not ordinary. When he says something, as the commander in chief of armed forces, as the one that is in charge of a kingdom, because there is no kingdom without power. And I'm saying that every kingdom is a battle for supremacy. Now, whatsoever you think the incoming president is, you can say whatever you want to say. But by 29th, be careful of what you say. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. Be careful of what you say. If he says your house should be demolished, there is nothing you can do about that. If he says it's going to make your stay in Nigeria difficult, there is nothing you can do about that. He's not only the head of government, he is the commander in chief of the armed forces. He has the soldiers, <clears throat> all the rank of soldiers, the navy, the air force, and the grand army, he has them under his command. If you ask them to move, the president has spoken, they will move. But the power of Nebuchadnezzar was even more than this. He was ruling over kingdoms. But God made him to understand. And God is making whosoever is taking over government in any nation understand. That with all their authorities, with all their powers, that he, God, <coughs> is he the ruler in the kingdom of men. He is the one that can overthrow a kingdom. He is the one that can silence a man. Somebody may be powerful and nobody can catch him. But there is a God that can deal with him. Are you listening to me? Praise God. In this second dream, there are four levels of kingdom. Nebuchadnezzar had this, you know, the image. And he saw this huge image. And he saw it divided, you know, with different kinds of uh, 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 elements. He saw that the head is of gold. He saw another part of the neck, you know, you know to, the, to the waist, you know, of silver. He saw part of it that is of bronze. He saw another part that is of clay, mixed with iron. <laughs> Praise God. And he saw in that dream that a stone was cast from nowhere. And this stone hit against the, the feet that is mixed with iron and clay. And the whole image fell down flat, crumbled. And Daniel was now interpreting. And said, King Nebuchadnezzar, there are levels of kingdoms. Now you are the head. You are the, you are the gold. But there are other kingdoms that will come after you. They will not be as strong as you are. Just like gold is more precious than silver. Just like silver is more durable than bronze. And of course, you can't compare bronze with iron or clay. That will be the graduation of the kingdoms. Shout hallelujah. 
And that's what we have, what made, brought us to where we are today. That now there is no person that you say that he is the king of kings. Or there is a president that is the president of presidents. You can say to honor the American president. But the Russian president will say no. Are you listening to me? Praise God. The German chancellor will say no. And it continues like that. I'm still driving out a point. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 8 verse 7. The supremacy. Battle for supremacy. In the kingdoms. 1 Samuel chapter 8 verse 7. And we are so. Chapter 8 verse what? 7. 1 Samuel 8. And the Lord said unto Samuel. Echoing unto the voice of the people. In all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee. But they have rejected me. That I should not reign over them. We are getting somewhere. Now you see. At a particular time. Let me read from my notes. Israel has been ruled. The king. Almighty God was their ruler. Was their head of government. <laughs> Praise God. But suddenly at the time, they rejected God. God has been ruling through the priests. Israel now sought for constitutional amendment by asking for a king to rule them. Like other nations, but not to be led by God through the priests who always led them either to war or govern the affairs of the nation. In the constitutional reform of Israel, we can see the dynamic of three factors. In any government of this world, in the kingdom of this world, like I said, that it is no longer, you know, total. People come to government for one reason or the other. People are fighting to take over the rulership of domain for one reason or the other. War is going on between Ukraine and uh, Russia because of the power for dominance. Power for supremacy. War is going on in Sudan today. Two generals felt that we should be in charge. Two army generals. And the country is thrown into battle. It is a battle for supremacy. Kingdom warring against kingdom. Now you can see that there are things. When Israel was asking for king. They were asking for constitutional reform. And there are things that are major factors. Number one. Man right to self-determination people run the system of government that place them any kingdom you see system of government it is a choice of the people and that is why in united nations charter self-determination is allowed anybody can say okay we want to stand on our own initially the government of that nation would not want them to go but if they continue to, uh, to fight, after, after some time, the United Nations may step into it. And say, if they want to go, let them go. Because you have signed into the shutter. Anybody that wants self you know, determination. So all these uh, government, democracy, um, uh, communism, socialism, dictatorship, Monarchial, they are all system of government and choice of people. It is human beings that choose what they want to be. But we are saying that in all these governments, in all this kingdom, there is a God factor. Because the Bible says God reigns in the affairs of men. 
Psalm 109 verse 19. Sorry, 103 verse 19. Psalm 103 verse 19. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens. And his kingdom ruleth over all. It is the kingdom of God that rules over all. I'm trying to say that with all the battle for supremacy. From one kingdom or the other. One nation against another. One group of people against another. One court group against another. Because you don't know that, you see, people that join court, why do they join court? They want to. They want to have supremacy. They want to have a control. And, and the funniest thing is that by the time you join a court, after some time, you learn that there is another court that is stronger than the other one. And you want to go and join that one. And from that one, you know there is another supreme court. And that's why people that are seeking for power, they will continue to go deeper and deeper into the world of darkness. They will continue to go deeper into the world of darkness. But for those of us who are children of God, we don't know what God has given to us. Talking about the realities of the kingdom, that there are things that are benefits. That we have a kingdom. We belong to a kingdom. A kingdom that is supreme. A kingdom that is over every other kingdom. If you don't understand this kingdom, <clears throat> you will not be able to enjoy the benefits of the kingdom. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. Now, you see, people are, you know, everything you see in the governmental system of the world, it is just all efforts to have control. Amen. I say amen. In 1919, the League of Nations was formed. After the First World War, nations came together. It was called the League of Nations. And what was the purpose? It is primarily mission was global peace. They want peace. But it failed. If it did not fail, there will not be second world war. The second world war came up again. Then came the United Nations. After the World War II. It subsists till now. But with global challenges. Now, we are in United Nations that want to tell Ukraine, Russia, stop it. Can they do that? Or tell Sudan, stop it. Or the challenges that are confronting the nations of the world. Everybody is looking for peace. But the more people seek for peace, the more peace eludes them. Hallelujah. Invariably, this organization... Or its replacement, whatever name it is called, we see come under the control of the Antichrist. The Antichrist will now be the one that will be in charge one day. Revelation chapter 3, verses 1 to 6 confirms that. And that's why the Bible says that even by now, there is spirit of Antichrist. <coughs> There is spirit of Antichrist. So, we must understand that the Antichrist is going to be the, the, the supreme general one day of the world. And the spirit of Antichrist is already at work. He's already at work. Satan will influence the nations against God and seek to annul his sovereignty. Everything that the devil is trying to do. Is to pull down the authority of God. And you see things happening. Hallelujah. Praise God. Maybe if you don't listen to news. It's good to listen to news. At least listen to the world news once a day. 
or read news. There are young people today that all the Android phone, they will never read news there. It is only WhatsApp and uh, chat chats and uh, Facebook and things like that. And there are nations, and, and you, when you read the world news, you begin to see the prophecy of the Bible coming to fulfillment. Prophecies coming to fulfillment. Shout hallelujah. I was reading a, a, a news of, um, of uh, a person that was, uh, you know, arrested. Yeah. Yes, I was, uh, yes, I look at it, you know, of how police, I think in Germany now, came to take a child, a boy, a boy from his parents. Why? Because the parents taught the child that trans, trans, what kind of trans, transgenderism and uh, and uh, homosexual and things like that that it is against the doctrines of the religion that is against the religion that it is wrong and because maybe the boy that boy now said that I don't know whether we have butcher in this church hallelujah and now because the parents because they taught the child that uh, the boy about um, a five or six year old boy maybe the boy get to school and now say that to change to another gender you want to be a girl that want to be a boy a boy that want to be a girl all right or almost that all this thing they are wrong that is against the faith police came to the house to take the boy from his parents hallelujah not to arrest not because they want to arrest the child but they said the parent is teaching the child the wrong thing what is against the policy of government so they would they took you don't know what it means to take your child away from you to go and give your child to another person and you may not see that child anymore in this our world and you said the antichrist is not at work already that the spirit of antichrist is not at work it is happening from one nation to the other there are some things you cannot say in america you can't say it in canada you will be arrested hallelujah we can preach anything in africa thank god for africa for now amen that we said no to homosexuality no to lesbianism no to this no to that you can't say you are a boy or a man you want to become a girl no oh you are a man you want to marry another man no you are a lady you want to marry another lady no but all those countries that I'm talking about, even the church is being threatened. If two guys are in your church, if they say they want to marry, if the pastor say, I'm not going to marry you, they will go and report the pastor to the government. The pastor will be arrested. Eh? And said, you, why should you know you're not married to man and man together? that you are not you are not following the law of the land you are doing contrary to the law of the land that is the world we are living in shout hallelujah the spirit of antichrist is already here you have heard of you know sodomy in the days of the bible long long time ago over 3,000 or 4,000 years ago the same spirit that was operating in Sodom and Gomorrah that made God to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah is the same thing that is still going on now and that is why you see we are saying the almighty reigns in the affairs of men God will judge God will judge 
something will happen. Nation will continue to crumble. God will show himself forth as the almighty God. You saw what happened in Brazil not too long ago. What happened in Brazil? They had a carnival in a particular part of the province in the country. And they began to, they now have, you know, they now have, they, I mean, they, 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 they have an idol that they are celebrating. That is Satan. They now make Satan as the God that they are worshipping. They now show, speak somebody like Jesus. And carries, takes on both people, people are demons. They were now beating that person on the streets. You know, making jest of Jesus. Making jest of Jesus. And say, Satan is the king. Satan is the ruler. Satan's supremacy. When they were doing all this, making jest of the Christian faith. Running down Jesus. All that Jesus suffered to establish his kingdom. For him to reign on earth. <clears throat> so that men might be redeemed back to God. <clears throat> they were doing all this. It was a big carnival. After they finished their own. Few weeks after that. <laughs> in that same province. Rain began to fall. Flood began to come. Gabriel came up. Until their house were submerged. The thousands of people died. The rain that could not be stopped. In that same place. Where they did all that. You know. They God, God, the rain, the flood destroyed. They were submerged. Their houses were submerged. Until those who are Christians began to pray. And say God had mercy. Shout hallelujah. God reigns in the affairs of men. Why am I starting, you know, starting off like this? I want you to understand when we talk about the supremacy of the kingdom. There is a battle for supremacy. But this kingdom we have now, which belongs to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which also find ourselves in. That is where the will of God reigns. And that's why, you know, the sovereignty of God is retained. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28. He said, we are for, Hebrews chapter 12, 28. We are for, we receiving a kingdom. We are for, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. There is a kingdom which cannot be moved. Like the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar. That later crumbled. That was destroyed. And God showed supreme mercy. To the extent that for a period of about seven years. That, that Nebuchadnezzar was eating grasses in the bush like animal. Until he acknowledged. That God reigns in the affairs of men. We are for we are for we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reference and godly fear. Verse 29 says, For our God is what? It's a consuming fire. Praise the Lord. Talking about Assessing the realities of the kingdom. There is an invitation that is given to us. There are kingdoms of men. There is a kingdom of God. This is the kingdom that Jesus has purchased. The kingdom that cannot be moved. The Bible said there is a kingdom that cannot crumble. Like, like every other kingdom of this world. Whether international kingdom or national kingdom or local kingdom, you understand what I'm saying now? Or kingdom of one corner or the other, everybody is fighting to take over, to take charge. 
Do you know that in your area of business there are kingdoms? There are people that are in charge. You say, ah, we are selling in the Bodija market, there are kingdoms. You say, okay, ah, we are, <clears throat> we are selling, you know, our motor parts, you know, or vehicles, there are kingdoms there. Ah, okay, we are selling building material, there are kingdoms there. Shout hallelujah. Tell me what you are doing that there are no kingdoms that are built around it. At times they will start like society. They will start like what? A society. They say a tailoring association. It is a kingdom. Amen. If you want to go far in that society. There are people that are principalities there. They want to show you the way. If your tailoring is doing, doing well. If your catering is doing well. They will invite you. Ah, this, they, this lady, come. Let's show you the way. The way to power. The way for, to sustenance. And because you also, you want that business to continue. You want to listen to them. But if you say, no, I am not interested. Eh, you are not interested. Me. That like your mother. Because I like you. I invite you. You say you are not interested. Ah. It is the elder that sent me to you. And the Martin Sopa wag bag ba lo ron wani shay ye keti mo ipe an wag ba an wag la ye praise the Lord. Eh? Say the elders sent us. At time they will send your age your age bracket to you. Ah, my sister, my sister. Oh, my brother, my brother. And say, so, well, uh, they sent me to you. Because she has submitted to them. She's part of the kingdom. She's part of the carcass. And so they will say, go and talk to her. Because she's a graduate. You also, you are what? You're a graduate. The Oibo, she wants to hear. You understand. Go and talk, talk to her. We, we don't know Oibo. <laughs> but we know what we have. And they will send them on errands. And you say, you are not interested. Then the battle line is drawn. The battle for supremacy. They want to, they want to show you. Who is in charge? Who is not in charge? Who has a, something to say? Who is not, does not have something to say? Whose voice should be heard? Whose voice should not be heard? The battle line will be drawn. Do you know that there are so many people, your business can be going very well, very well. Suddenly, there is crisis. And as you are, you are getting rid of one crisis, you enter into another one. Especially when you say, come to society. They said we invite you to our club. Our club. It's a club meeting. Come and join our club. They are all cults. Hello. They are what? They are cults. They will not say it is Oboni. They won't say it is uh, Awapa. They won't say it is the brother. They will say it is brotherhood. Brotherhood of the stars. Eh? Ladies of destiny. The rising sun. Not our own here. Not our own day start right here, here. But they will call the beautiful name. They say, come, no, come. It is, ah, we want to show you the way so that your business is going to boom. When you take the first leg, you will not know when the other second level will enter. Some people are looking at me this morning. Maybe they are already inviting you. I'm looking at your faces this morning. Somebody is telling me, what you don't do it. They are already telling you, come. Come. Hallelujah. Let me tell you. There is a kingdom that we belong to. Say, so we have for we receive a kingdom which cannot be moved. We are not ordinary. We also have a kingdom. 
And this kingdom is a supreme kingdom. When you talk about the battles for kingdom, battle for, domi for, for, uh, for, for domineering, to dominate, battle to take charge, things that are going on from the global to the nations, to the cities, to areas, to towns, to villages, there are different types of kingdoms. And they are all fighting for supremacy. They are fighting for dominance. Hallelujah. You don't know how some people fight for chairman of Adubo. Street chairman. And you begin to ask yourself, is there anything more than this chairman? Hallelujah. Ah, uh, you don't know. Praise God. They say, ah, just to be chairman of your streets. If there is nothing, there will not be battle for it. Anything that has to do with election, there is a power behind it. There is something behind it. When you are contesting for something, there's something you want to get, you know, you know, there. Hallelujah. I hope you read in the newspaper last one or two weeks. When I can't remember the number now, the wishes and the wizards, they said they are behind Tinubu, that they are prepared for the inauguration of the president. And they have said themselves that they are watching over him. That nothing is going to happen to him. So they are the one, they are the backup for him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Eh? Everybody is raising his voice. Everybody is claiming the ownership of the president. The Muslim will say, yes, it belongs to us. The wishes and the wizard said, it's our own. And I don't know what the Christians are saying. Uh, the Christian also are saying his wife, his wife is a pastor, so he's our own. We are deceiving ourselves. The man knows where he belongs. <laughs> Praise God. You know the beating that he's going to listen to. But you know the joy as I close this message is a continuous message. Amen. Is the fact that the Almighty reigns in the kingdom of men. No matter. Somebody to say, I am the one in charge. There is a God who reigns in the affairs of men. And because you belong to that kingdom, you are of the class of that rulership. Are you getting my point now? He said, I have said that ye are gods. And every one of you, the son of the almighty. And because you are a child of God, if you are born again, you are redeemed into this kingdom. You are born into this kingdom. Maybe I should just close with a scripture. Hallelujah. Look at that Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. No, 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 not Romans chapter 8. Look at, um, I, I left it from the beginning. Look at the book of, uh, yes, Romans chapter 8. But now verse Hallelujah. Okay. Excuse me. This is what the Bible says. Okay. Excuse me. Let me look at um, verse. Yes. Let's look at Hebrews twelve twenty eight. He said, wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace. We are by we may serve God acceptably with reference and godly fear. So, we have the grace. Let us receive grace. This grace is when we, we receive, when we give our life to Jesus. When you confess your sin and invite Jesus Christ into your life. Then you have the grace of God with you. You have the grace of God, you know, to enjoy everything that the kingdom of God has provided. 
we must understand that when we find ourselves there, then we become part and parcel of the kingdom. We become part and parcel of the kingdom. Shout hallelujah. Look at Luke chapter 17. Verse 20 and 21. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees. They asked from the Pharisees. They, I mean the Pharisees were asking Jesus. When the kingdom of God shall come. He answered them and said. The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. The kingdom does not come with observation. I will explain that. Neither shall they say low air or low there. For behold, the kingdom of God is where? It's within you. The kingdom of God is within you. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, it's within you. Now, when he said it does not come by observation. When somebody gives his life to Christ, when you have the kingdom of God in you, it does not make you taller. It does not make you shorter. It does not make you to change your color. Hallelujah. It is not by observation. Amen. But it is what you carry inside. The kingdom we are talking about why you are part of the kingdom the supreme kingdom is because the kingdom is within you shout hallelujah if god almighty has the final say in the affairs of men because you belong to that kingdom anything that is the will of god that you want to establish you have the final say somebody get what i'm saying any situation where there are other kingdoms that are agitating for control as somebody who has the supreme kingdom the supremacy of the kingdom you can neg you can legislate you can take a decision and because you that take that decision god almighty who is the head of our kingdom who reigns in the affairs of men we sanction it we bring it to manifestation. Amen. That is what we have. That is our heritage. That is the inheritance. That is well, how we can, we can demonstrate that we have a kingdom that is supreme. The kingdom that is over other kingdoms. That's why we call Jesus the king of kings and the lord of lords is the king over all other kingdoms and all those who are kings is the king over all dominions he reigns and rule over the affairs of men but if you don't take decision nothing is going to happen as i conclude what kind of kingdoms or kingdoms that are trying to work against your life what are the operations of the forces of darkness around you who are those people who gather themselves together who say that you are not going to prosper who are those people who thought that they are like Nebuchadnezzar they think that their hands has found or put things in place and they are in charge and they are forgotten that is the almighty that reigns in the affairs of men. What is that power? What is that kingdom? Who are those people that are oppressing your life? That are oppressing your destiny? They are making, they have exercised their own power. But somebody who has received the kingdom, who has the kingdom of God in within him or her you are to take decision you are to use your authority and because our God reigns and whatever you say is final hallelujah these are the realities we we'll begin to look at the kingdom realities how you can assess these realities hallelujah 
I say hallelujah. The Bible says, greater is he that lives in us than he that is in the world. We shall decree a thing. It shall be established. The light will shine in our ways. Whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Whatsoever we agree, when we pray, the Bible says we should believe that it shall be done and we shall have answer, our answer to our prayers. Hallelujah. We have authority. We operate from a kingdom. A kingdom that is supreme. A kingdom that cannot be pulled down. Every other kingdom of this world can never last forever. I said it sometimes. You know, it used to be Roman Empire. It was Rome that was ruling. <laughs> the whole world then. Before that time, it was this Babylon. And some other, you know, the Asian, the, I mean, the, the Persian and Medians. Kingdom. There are a lot of kingdoms that have existed. Alright? Romans kingdom. There was a time that it was this Britain. You know? Shout hallelujah. I'm sure there are younger, young girls, uh, young ladies, I don't know, not ladies here, that they don't know that Britain was called Great Britain before. You know, you read it. Uh -huh. But not in your lifetime, you know. It used to be Great Britain, Great Britain. But they have removed the great in front of Britain long time, Abby. Because there is nothing great about Britain. But when it was Great Britain, they colonized so many nations. They colonized India. They gave, you know, independence to India. They gave independence to so many countries. Not only in Africa, even in Asia. Amen. It was a great Britain. But the great has been removed. It has become just ordinary Britain. Because later, a country like America took over. Hallelujah. And America also with their pride. I don't know, I was saying during the week that America will change everything. Everything that Britain said it is way, America will say it is way this way. Amen. You know, Britain still drive on the right hand side, Abby. Right hand side. Uh, so, America said, mm. when they became a nation, said it is left hand side. Everything they change, they don't want. That's why your English, when you write favor, that of a Britain has you, that of America, they remove you. <laughs> Praise God. You know, you know, it is intentional. Praise the Lord. If you want to switch, switch of light. In America, you switch up. It's on. Down is off. <laughs> Praise God. It is intentional. Go on. I know I watch so many things. Even their water closets, their toilet, their water closets. If you flush, all the one you are using, it is from British design. When you flush it like that, Abby, water will come. Vroom, vroom. Mm, American water system is not like that. When you flush, eh, water does not come. Water will come from underground, Abby, and suck that thing away. They change everything. Just to tell Britain, look, we are in charge. Praise God. The way, the, the way of speaking English is different. He said, oh, they are speaking, initially, the British, they are speaking American slang. American slang. That is their own English. If somebody say, now, say he's speaking slang, he's speaking slang, you know, he will cause you say, yeah, you know, this and that. He said, he's speaking slang. Because he said, yeah, he didn't say yes. He said, he's speaking slang. That is their own English. If you write it, you pass. <laughs> Praise God. If you write the other one, you may fail. But America also is getting weak by the day. It's getting weak by the day. It's getting weak by the day. They try to change everything. You call it football. They call it soccer. Abi? Hey, Damilon. What do you call football? America says it is soccer. What is football? Is the handball. The rugby. Abi? There is the one that is giving you. You call this trouser. They say it is pant. Amen. And now said the one we now wear inside, we call pant. What do they call it? It is under underwear. But what is this one? He said this one is pant. 
Praise God. So if you go to America now, you say, I want to buy trousers. They don't know what is trousers. This is pants. Hallelujah. Because they have the power. They can decide. But things are changing. They are trying to fight. There is fight going on. Cold war going on between, between, between America and China. China want to. That's why we are borrow, borrow, borrow from China. And China said they are not borrowing us money again. Abi. In Nigeria, they said they don't want to borrow again. Now, because they thought that, yes, don't worry, we'll borrow you. Come, 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 come. They say now, if you want to buy something, you know, from China, you don't need to use dollar again. You can use their Cheyenne, Abi Chen, whatever. Yuan, you can use our money. So, we can do transacting. They are doing all those things to gain supremacy over United States of America. There is a battle, economic battle, military battle, military might. A lot of battles are going on. I want you to understand that is how it's going on also in the kingdom of darkness. Supremacy in the field of your profession. Supremacy, you know, in the field of your trade. Supremacy in that area, in that domain, in that environment. People are agitating to have a control. But as a Christian, as a member of the body of Christ, don't slip off. We are, we are at an advantage. We have a kingdom that cannot be moved. The kingdom that is forever. The kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Bible says, as for the extent of his kingdom, there shall be no hand. Anywhere you move, the kingdom spread. In your business, in your trade, in your properties, in your domain, everywhere you go, the kingdom of Jesus Christ is the supreme kingdom exercise it. But if you don't understand it, you don't know what to do about it. It is not a matter of sentiments. In this church, we take time to teach us, to teach us, to tell us, to teach us things. It is not enough to just say, okay, oh yeah, it's a kagba dura. Oh yeah, go kagba dura. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh kagba dura. So you don't understand what you are praying. It is not a sensual thing. Praise God. I said, praise God. If I'm telling my child or my son, I'm your father, something must be wrong. If I'm introducing myself as his father, you understand what I'm saying? He should know that I'm his father. At that time, he's, uh, I mean, I'm the father to him, Abi. For me to say, I'm your father, then there is a problem. I don't need to tell him that I'm father before I exercise my authority as a father. At least authority that I have, you know, that is allowed to, you know, to operate as a father. Hallelujah. Praise God. When you learn, if, I, if, you, if, you, if you land in um, Nigeria, if you fly, you land. They will say Nigerian passport this way. Foreign passport this way. Praise God. At least that is one time we can do shakara. Praise God. Amen. I mean, that's when we can do shakara. So that when all the foreigners, whether they are American or Chinese, they want to, want to aha, they begin to look at their something too. If you get to our immigration, Akoko, no. Praise God. They say, oh, yeah, yeah, the foreigners. If I come, you know, I have a kind of boldness. I'm a Nigerian. My green passport that they don't respect in America, they don't respect. My, I carry my own. Yeah, this is green passport. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I shackle with my green passport. The American that is a blue passport or whatever it is. I say, you, we are Nigerian. Praise God. But when we go there, our green passport, we hold it. That's why I put it visa. What to do? Because you should do now. They can look at your, you know, there are people who go to immigration and they send back. Don't you want America? Don't you feel you have a passport? They will send them back. The next flight, the next when that plane is going back. What did he do? 
the immigration person just uh, at the point of entry, they will just ask, what do you want? Why are you here? And people that are not informed, when you are going to America, you want to attend a conference, but that conference has come and gone. You know, you still have your visa. Are you with me? And you now enter plane. Now that uh, the conference has come and gone. You use that conference to collect the visa. Then you have collected the visa. The visa is with you for two years. In fact, they are stepping it to five years now. Now you have the visa. So when you now want to enter, after about uh, six months of the conference, when you now say, I have money, I want to go to America. I want to go and greet somebody. When you now get there, <clears throat> they can ask and say, oh, you're welcome. Um, what are you, why are you in America? They will ask you. And they will look at it because the condition whereby that something is issued is already in their system. The, uh, the visa they gave you in, um, in Nigeria, the condition that you are going for a conference is in their system. What you appear along. When they now say, okay, right, okay, you are for a conference, they will remind you, but the conference ended two months ago. Then what are you here for? And yes, the conference ended, then I have to come and greet my friend. They say, no. The conference you came for has ended two months ago. What are, why, are you, why are you coming in? Praise the Lord. There are people like that they will send back from that point. Because that is a kingdom. They have their rules and regulations. You can't do any accord against them. But if it is your country, you have all the full rights and what? Privileges. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. You must understand that the kingdom realities is certain. Mysteries of the kingdom, they exist. But it's for you to know that is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. As you come in this series, I believe God is going to show you great things. In the name of Jesus. Let us rise to pray. And the prayer this morning is two ways. The first thing is that if you know you are not part of the kingdom, if you are not giving your life to Jesus, you can invite Jesus into your heart. Ask the Lord to forgive you. I want the kingdom also to come within me. Let the kingdom come within me. And if you are born again, but you have not been exercising your right, you will receive grace this morning to operate in the kingdom. To operate in the kingdom. And of course, the last prayer is to exercise your authority. To confront every other kingdom. That are trying to stand, that is trying to stand against you. That is trying to work against your life. You have a kingdom that is supreme. And so, you can deal with them in a place of prayers. Let's begin to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Close your eyes and pray. I am pray. There's battle for supremacy. Whatever business you are doing, if you don't come to the kingdom of God, you may not last there. If you don't have access to the kingdom, you can continue to labor and labor and labor without success. Because there are kingdoms at war. There are kingdoms at war. You tell the Lord Jesus come into my heart. When you invite Jesus into your heart, then you have the kingdom within you. You have the kingdom within you. You say, Lord, forgive me my sins. Your sins are forgiven. And Jesus reigns in your heart. I want you to understand that you can exercise authority. You have the authority to operate in the kingdom. You can bind, you can loose. You have the authority. You have the authority. As from today, exercise that authority. Exercise that authority. You can pray to God and tell him, every kingdom that are troubling my life, let them collapse this morning. Let them fall before me. Let them crumble. 
as the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar crumbled, cause every strange kingdoms that are trying to dominate my life, cause them, Lord, to crumble. Cause them to fall before me. Cause them to fall before me. You must understand there is a battle for supremacy. For your business to thrive. There are people that are in charge. Who feel that they are in charge. But tell them that look your father is in charge. Your father is in charge. They are not in charge. They call themselves club. They said they are society. They said they are association. But there is cultism going on among them. Ah, there are a lot of things going on among them. Let them know that your father has a final say. That I'm a child of God. In this business, I will succeed. I will rise. I will shine. I will rise. I will shine. Everybody is fighting for something. Everybody is fighting for something. But the question is, what are you fighting for? Or are you not fighting at all? Are you also fighting for supremacy? Are you fighting to have a control? You must not fold your hands. I will succeed. I will make it. I will make it. I don't know about you. I will succeed. The enemies will not overpower me. The kingdom of this world will not succeed over my life. My marriage will thrive. Battles against my marriage will not stand. Battles against my family will not stand. Battles of control over my business will not stand. Battles of supremacy over my, of my destiny will not stand. Our God reigns in the affairs of men. Our God reigns in all this kingdom. They must become weakened while we become stronger. Rabo si kraba shanda kadebo si kraba shanda raba. Repo si kadebo sindi kraba shanda kayagaba. Repa sundi kayege di basukraba. Reni masanda kayege di basukrobo. Reni masanda kaye. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for your people. Let them have a touch of God in their lives. Let every kingdom begin to crumble. Every battle against their glory begin to fall. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every power for supremacy. In the name of Jesus. Let them begin to fall. Let them be destroyed. Let them emerge. Let the power of God begin to manifest through these lives. Let the grace of God be sufficient for them. Every closed door, command them to be open. Begin to tell the Lord. Where they say there is no way, God, make way for me. Let the kingdom of men submit to me. Let the key policies of men submit to me. Is there no way, no contract there? Let them submit to me. I said, people are not interested in that line of business. They must be interested because there is a kingdom that you belong to, a supreme kingdom. Christy job already. Ki a share bere. Christy Sing one more time. Praise the Lord, I don't know whether 
they are threatening you in your place of work come and join us come and join us come and join us and it is cult it is secret society and they are threatening you you don't need to be afraid you can bring their matter to church let's minister to, let's, mini, let, let's pray for you but don't submit to them don't agree with them because it is a lie those that will see torture you they are there don't belong to other courts greater than the one they are introducing you to they still exist there they are there but the power of God is forever the dominion of Jesus is forever at the name of Jesus every knee must bow Father we thank you this morning we give you praise Lord for your word that has gone forth Holy Spirit interpret this word in every heart in the name of Jesus where there is fear Lord let there be boldness let there be faith let everybody take authority and take dominance of his territory may it be business may it be career may it be environment where we live may it be where we walk I pray for the anointing for dominance which is the anointing of the kingdom rise upon every person in the name of Jesus let the anointing rise upon you now in the name of Jesus from today you will not be suppressed from today you will not be oppressed from today men shall not continue to rule over you in the name of Jesus you have a kingdom within you the kingdom that cannot be destroyed I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that from this moment when you move heaven moves with you you will enjoy the backup of heaven at all times in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray today, there is any oppression going on in any life, I command deliverance in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> I command healing in the name of Jesus. I command lifting in the name of Jesus. We are they say there is no way. It is the kingdom that is speaking. Let there be way for you in the name of Jesus. Because Baba Arelo nile Toluwa nile ati e kunre Aye a tongo tote do si nwa jure Gogo bi toni ko saye Oke toni kwe ko saye Loru ko jesu kolon ko waye fon Mani loru ko jesu Kolo a shete ni a shekwe Lati o ni Gogo nto ba ti nso ni nwa jura Kono bre kobre si ma la fon Iyanu kobre si ma shele I decree let there be miracles Let there be signs and wonders let there be signs and wonders. Bogwe in tell ni she lo ruko Jesu ko lon ko la na fo yin. Bogba dura fun anu ati ise iyanu to ko je oye yin, to ko je ojo ore yin, lo ruko Jesu ko lo ko gbedide fo yin. Bogba dura lo ruko Jesu ki iyanu bre si ma sele. Lo ruko Jesu ko na bre si ma la. Lo ruko Jesu bre si ma tesi waju. Lo ruko Jesu bre ma tesi waju. Lo ruko Jesu so ma tesi waju. Bogbo awon to joko si ibu joko to ye ko joko si ninu ijoba okokun loruko Jesu Christ asi won ni de loruko Jesu Christ lara asi won ni de aye to to si oya wo be lo in this month you will testify of the goodness of the Lord you will testify so shall it be in the name of God the Father in the name of God the Son in the name of God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen.